YouTubers. I'm off today, it's my half day at work, so we're gonna go and do a spot of fishing. Gonna meet up with Mr. William Senior. We're gonna head down to um, Hastings Seafront and see if we can uh, do a little bit better than the whiting we've been having. Now, talking of whiting, at the end of this, I should try and splice in a little clip that we'd started to film the other night, but we just didn't get enough content. So, have a look at the end of this video for this lovely, whiting that we caught. I don't want to give too much away, but we think it was a little bit special. Anyway, tubers, let's go and have a look at that beach. Here we are then, tubers. I've got my two rods set up and out. My left hand rod's got mackerel on a pedal rig, pedal pulley rig, should I say. My right hand rod's got a two up flapper. I think that's all right. I haven't got one down. So a two up rig on that. I'll show you them when I bring them in next. Over in senior, going for a cast. You might have him touch me right off then. Here we go, let's have a check of him. Go for a see it land. Oh, that was a good distance. I've rent as hard as I can on my left rod, and I've gone a good pace on my right hand rod. All right, Jimmy, bring you back as soon as one of these go. Go. Got a little whiting and a peeler crab. Oh no, the crab's already on the beach. Right, we'll get that little fella unhooked, slip him back, and let's try for a bigger dash. Well, it's not bigger anyway. Well, Mr. William Senior is going to go for another cast tubers. I don't know if you um, watched what I did in that last video when he was recording, but what I was doing, I don't know if it's the right technique, but it's my technique. I'm casting out, I'm holding, like I would with a carp rod, I'm feeling bottom. So I'm trying to keep a tight line. So the minute I see the lead hit, hit the uh, water, I'm stopping the line from coming off my uh, reel anymore. Whether I feel the bottom down or not, which I have done on a couple of occasions, I'm keeping the line tight, putting the bow arm back over, and I'm opening up the drag. And then I'm going on a real, I know you shouldn't perhaps, but I'm going on a real slack drag and walking back up to my pod. I could move the pod forward, I do know, but the tide's not gonna go out any further now, so I see no advantage. So I'd only have to move it back again shortly. And we're considering moving one groin along anyway. So yeah, just a quick recap. I'm casting out. See the lead hit the uh, water. Keeping my line tight. Reeling in a little bit if necessary. And then I'm walking back on a lightened drag. Putting my rod down, tightening the drag back up sufficiently 
and having a tight line and keeping a nice curve on the tip section of the rod. Right, there we go, Mr. Williams is gonna chuck it out. Perhaps maybe he's gonna go, what I said. He's clipped up, has he? No, not quite doing what I've done. Yeah, there you go, he's just wound in a bit of slack. Now he's got the line tight. He's loosening up the drag. Now walking back with the drag loose. So the line's always tight, not so loose that a bit of breeze can peel off line off the spool. Yeah, I see it's gonna get the butt. I didn't mention that, but yeah, I do dig the butt in. And he's tightened the drag up now. And now he's gonna wind into it. And you'll see the rod tip come round slightly. I would have gone a little bit more than that, but you can see he's got a tight line because the rod tip is now going with the uh, tie. Some of the wonders of beach fishing. Just about to come into the picture now. The views and the wonderful sunset. That's beachy head there in the distance. Doesn't that look beautiful? We're not sure if he's got something, tubers, but there was a bit of tip action. Fingers crossed. They're not always going to be brilliant sessions. We try to bring you content. Yeah. One thing we can say we've learnt from this session though is that we know not to fish this groin again because of the rocks necessarily. Maybe at high tide drop in a ledge short of the rocks might be a good idea. But anyway, I think Mr. Williams has caught something. No. He's done it, he's got something. He saved the blank. How do you feel about that? What a result. <laughs> <coughs> he's double looked it. There you are, Shavers. Oh, he's a bit tangled. Right, we'll get this mess sorted out and then we're slipping back. I I definitely not to be outdone through, but I've just had a No, oh that came on a sand deal. Bigger fish. Slightly bigger fish. But I'm gonna get to slip that back. Tubers. We might have won on here, it looked like a bit of a bang, but we're going to outro now because as you can see, the light is just starting to fade. It's too much for recording. He's got one, brilliant. And look at that. That beautiful in that direction. But anyway, I'm going to splice in that little bit of footage I've got from the other night with Mr. Williams. Well, I'm sure you'll appreciate the capture. But what have we here, though? Right. Oh. Can't see anything. No, I'm afraid not, Mr. Williams. Anyway, that's it from this video. We'll see you next time. You say bye? Bye. bye. Tubers, oh, look at on. this. That was a violent take. But that is what you can take over there. But I'm that, not. <laughs> yeah, that is a whopper. Oh, I need to discord you. That's a whopper and all. Yeah, we'll get that on the measuring board, Tubers. Yeah, we'll clean that off, get it on there. Tubers, our biggest that we know of is fur two.
covered in sand. Oh, I think she smashed at this one. She's a 44. Laddie, what would we oh. do if we get bigger than that? I don't know. We won't be able to measure it, that's for sure. Look at that. That is a wee. <laughs> He's lively. That's a beauty. Right, slip her back. Oh, yes. Yeah, next wave should be gone. 